in the sense of civilization and all aspects of man's intellectual life, speech, and all aspects of civilization, as someone just said, uh, in the sense of them being non-essential, in the sense yeah. of you being able to live physically without them, uh, there's another aspect that I've touched on several times here and there about how systems, uh, the weaker they are, I'm just roughly quoting some of the things I've thrown out over the last several months, the less substantial is a system, the more it engages in self-reference. That's been the basis of it, and I don't know whether any of you has ever given it much thought or any more about it. But, uh, let us say that a system is closer to just point blank objective reality, not by your definition or mine, and we're not trying to be partisan about, well, some things are real and some are not. Just when it's closer to the essentials of life, of staying alive, the less the system must engage in self-reference, but also the less, the short livedder it is. The less longevity then. For those of you going tut tut. And if you notice all of man's institutions engage heavily in self reference religion, politics, philosophy, education, society, culture, and not any specific ones, any of them. It doesn't matter which ones. Well, a great example to cut right to the heart of all culture and especially haute couture. <laughs> and religion and philosophy cut right to it. I'll give you a prime example. Look at the number of country and western songs that talk about being in the country and western song business. Huh? Huh? Do I make my point or what? But rather than taking that as simply some sort of attack, that is, if you were sitting around at a church, if you were sitting around at some cult somewhere, if you're seeing right at a political rally, uh, they engage continually in self-reference. That is, they talk about the system itself, whatever it be. Uh, ministers, priests will talk continually about the problems the church has surviving in this secular day and age. What are we talking about now? I said secular, not secular. I saw, I saw the guy's lips were moving back there like... <laughs> I mean, things are perverted enough, sir, without... <laughs> secular! Uh, they, will, they will expend large amounts of time to talking about the difficulty of the church going. To a fallen religion, or we could be talking about a political party. We could be talking about the new neo-progressive Christian Democrat fascist in the new republic of Slovavia. And they're sitting around, and here it is, a brand new day. We're free of the communist joke and our past tyrants and so here's a chance let's really go somewhere with a whole new programs and you go to a meeting and they will sit there and most of me will be taken up in self-reference they can explain it if you jumped up for some reason and accused them and said well what the, what the hell did I show up here for that you guys uh, in some pamphlet I heard that you had ideas very uh, liberal ideas to improve everyone's standard of living etc etc and I get here and all you're talking about is the party itself. All you're talking about is the problems you're having and raising money, which is always the last ditch, if not first ditch stand of all religions, politics, and everything else. When in doubt, tell them you got, we've got to raise more money. You know, new building. That's the way the churches do it. P politics is always, we've got to buy more votes. Okay. It's all the same thing. The point is, they do not have to turn their attention, this is not the way they look at it, obviously, but they don't have to turn their attention to the apparent aim. If the apparent of aim of religion is to uh, improve men's consciousness, to make men better humans, to make men quit feeling guilty, to make men not fear death, you know, anywhere in there, just jump in whenever you feel, you know, pull out your ukulele and jump right in wherever you like. <laughs> but it, somewhere within that, if that's considered to be the aim of any religion, then they do what in a wonderful manner, miserably fail. In a most excellent manner, they miserably fail. And so rather than have to face up to that, what do you do? You talk about the system itself. You talk about the problems. You talk about the declining church attendance. You talk about the, you know, the roof needs repairing. You talk about anything except what appears to be the aim, except that is not an attack 
once you realize that all of civilization is a kind of mental You want something nasty or clean? <laughs> it's mostly imagination. It's just mostly imagination. All the institutions, all these fancy structures are just talk. That's why they must talk so much about the structures themselves, about the buildings, about anything specific they can put their hands on because that's the only thing they can put their hands on. Because there's no such thing as religion. There's no such thing as culture. Well, yes, there is culture. Look at this mu new museum we have. And it's half paid for. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to contribute? Wait a minute, that's not culture, that's a building. And then they can look at you like, well, you plebeian, you know, dumbass. You, know? you bucolic peckerhead, where did you come from? You know, how can you look at this building? I mean, it was designed by Mr. P and his, what do you call it? Mr. Drip. Well, that, that, world, that famous architect which has to... <laughs> Pele, Pele, the guy that kicks the balls against the buildings when he builds them. Well, he's somewhere in there. Rather than see that, that any of this was an attack, you realize, although it can be attacked, and people do attack it. I've heard, believe it or not, country and western music attacked for the very reason I pointed out. And then I'm saying, boy, this is sickening. You hear song after song. I say one artist had a string of hits, and they were all about, for several years, about... Oh, how it is being a country and western singer on the road, you know, having to screw a different woman every night, having to get <laughs> drunk, having to stay away from my wife and kitties. <laughs> and I've heard, I heard it attack like, what kind of, who the hell cares about somebody whining, complaining, and what they sing about is not, you know, feeding the hungry or, you know, when will Jesus return to earth and will he be a Baptist? You know, important matters. I mean, who wants to hear somebody sing about singing? Who wants to hear a performer sing about being a performer? That's all of it. It's not just country and western music. What you see, in a certain way, all imaginary structures, institutions. What else are they going to talk about? If they actually started to get down, if somebody popped in and said, wait a minute, let's just point blank. A guy just jumps into the middle of an institution, a cultural, a religious, any kind. He says, uh, I've been hearing about art museums. I've been hearing about symphony halls. I've been hearing about institutions of higher education on this planet. And let's assume the man is an absolute, nonpartisan, out-of-town, ob ob objective observer. And he says, would you explain to me exactly what it is? And in some way they were forced to, or they you know, lapsed into a moment and thought, well, hey, well, let's, let's tell him. Oh. Does anybody remember the one from the other night? that, you know, hormones can holler, hey, look over here at my thighs and my butt and my tits. But then neurons have to go, hey, look over here at my, look over here at my, at my, that's it. That if, or, you know, if they weaken and decide, well, let's, let's talk to this man exactly what we're about. Very shortly, they would be slapping themselves around. You know, popes and presidents and curators like, have we lost our minds? What do you mean? You know, maybe the head curator, the provost of the university tells the dean, well, hey, this man's asked a decent question. Nobody ever asked it just that point blank. Let's tell him. Let's discuss it. Call for some tea and we'll sit down. And they both might sit down for a second. And finally, one of them would think, God damn, we've lost our minds. And he won't grab you on the dean and pull him and say, what the hell are you talking about? We can't talk to the man about this. Of course, none of this would happen, but do you, do you follow? There's nothing to talk about. Hey, look over here at my... Look. <laughs> this sort of activity. Uh, a few weeks back, I was giving sort of a little... It's not... I was about to give some more history, but it's not a history, it's not the history, it's just it's talk. Some history. Just like religion, to use probably the most easily comparable example, this kind of activity, or what appears to be historically, what appears to be in books, what people seem to talk about, also ends up engaging in almost endless self-reference.
I was going to give a little more of a kind of, not the, not a, but some history, and ask you to consider a question again. Oh. How can I translate quo vadis into why, knowing no Latin, presents a certain problem, wouldn't you say? So, anyway, so imagine I dramatically went, and in Latin said, and in Latin I said, why existest thou? How would that be? Or even Greek, since I don't know either one. Take your choice. Whichever one would impress you the most, pretend I just did it. I should have done it, and everybody would assume that the sound just it was a glitch in the sound. Uh, well, you have had, uh, I started to use the Western world, but as far as just nice fat chunks of recorded history, you can look back at the Greeks and the Western world, and you can look back at the uh, writings. Just using some that you have probably heard of, you could take the writings of Confucius and all of those that were collected under the name of the Tao in the other side of the world, in the East. But in the Greeks, you had them dealing with what appears in retrospect to us now. I don't mean us, me, but I'm just ordinary Western history, that they were dealing more with mythology than what we now call religion. That is, the God just seemed to be super exaggerations of human Huh, strengths and lots of human frailties. You know, that Zeus would get drunk and was prone to sleep with your wife if you didn't watch it. And if he did and you caught him, you know, you better think twice before you say anything. Because, <laughs> because a man could probably clean your plow. <laughs> but back to the way it's just to take, and I'm just using ordinary history as you, as it's taught. Uh, you have. The Plato's and the Pythagoras is, 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 is. and the ideas of the mysteries, the Greek mysteries, and of course the general mythology, and the tales of the gods. And it all seemed to be based, regardless of what you may have thought in college or what they, however they try to teach you to write it nowadays. But if you look at it in a certain way, it was simply people asking the same question that people that would become interested in such as this if they survived any sort of first few minutes of it is people really saying, what in the hell you know, am I doing being here, being a human? And then they end up looking if they don't get over it. They end up looking around a little bit and they very soon, at an early age, they abandon believing that there's any chance that they can figure it out if they ever had it. And in case you never had that, I'm not trying to make you feel bad because it is not necessarily the norm. But there are some people around that the first thing when they feel like, boy, when the brain kind of really gets going and they get to be, who knows what, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. I'm just giving you some leeway so that some of you who are slow starters don't feel so bad. You know? <laughs> some of you who didn't learn to talk until you were, you know, well past the age of being legally permitted to drive. <laughs> well, very few people, anyway, it's the exception for people to feel like it, it, that great moment that most of you tend to forget of believing that there was something extraordinary to life. Besides, as great as ice cream is, as great as sticking your finger in your sister's ear and eye, <laughs> The grace it was throwing food against the wall, making rude noises, sleeping late, all that. Once you got past that and the brain really got going, your mind began to actually get out and play, wanted to get out and play with the rest of the body, and it never could find exactly what to do. It couldn't find anything that was as much fun as jumping out of a tree, sticking your finger in your sister's nose, throwing food, making rude noises. The mind couldn't find it. Very few people, but there were a few as, since I stuck my fat foot in it, that did feel like, well, wait a minute, I'll get it in a second. You know, it's like wondering whether jumping out of a tree on a, you know, 
a small fat person that lives next door to you is as much fun as it looks and you try it and sure enough it is. Well, some people, some people, once they, understood, once they had this thing like, boy, this is going to be fun. You now I got a new thing to play with, this, you know, besides my other private, you know. Some of you already caught on to that, but you think, boy, this thing I can tell already, this is going, this is going to be fun. And you keep looking around for the right tree to jump out of or who to jump on or who to stick your finger, you know, something comparable, and you don't find it. What's the obvious thing to do? Is you turn to those who are older, more experienced than you. What do I do? And that's how you end up with some institution. You can start off with family, but family very quickly washes their hands of it. If you want to look at that as being an institution, well, it's something external to you. But then shortly thereafter, you must turn to a system, to an institution. The institutions do not know it's not their job, it's their job to say they do. It's their job, it's their responsibility to, in a sense, put you in a daze, to get you over it, to keep you standing upright, but not enough to actually go anywhere. Teach you how to walk a little bit, but not enough to run. Teach you how to think a little bit, but not enough to actually be able to think. Jesus. <laughs> but the question is always, I hate to put words on what I already gave you one, because the world is full of, and always is, somebody that you holler, if you just jump up on the middle of a crowd out of the Super Bowl game and holler, I've got to know one thing, you can have everything i got. But you ain't doing that, but the crowd hollers, okay, what? And you holler, somebody tell me the purpose, of, the meaning of life. <laughs> and you'll have, assuming there's 76,000 people there, and assuming that, well, let's say a, a fourth of them still sober enough to, you know, speak the king's English. <laughs> then you'll have, let's say a third, let's make it easier on myself. Then 25,000 of them will holler, wait, 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 I'll be glad to tell you. Should have, you know, a few more minutes before halftime's over, and they'll tell you. <laughs> they won't tell you. I mean, they may give a comment without a preface, and you go, wait a minute, I like that, or where'd you get that? And they go, oh, well, that came from my religion. Oh, that came from such and such philosophy. Oh. But you say, no, I want somebody to tell me. I want you to tell me. You know, even the people who are semi-sober, that 25,000, they're going to go, ah, oh. You know, you're, you're drunk. <laughs> so I, I hate to even put the words on, you know, what, what this is all about. Because you could say, well, it's just people wanting to know what's the purpose of life. And that's about as safe as any. It's, in a sense, though, it is to pacify. It is to entertain one's brain. It is to give it something worthwhile to do. It is to give it the individual something worthwhile enough to do that to itself its neurons can go hey look over here at my thinking look over here at my consciousness itself but that cannot be done extra person it cannot be done systematic it cannot be done one person to another there has been all the way from the Greek mythologies and the mysteries and the philosophy looked at as being the fountainhead of Western thought, Western philosophy. <laughs> then you have had, just to name the better known ones, you have had, uh, well, all religions. So just forget them, but I'll include it so that you'll know that I didn't ignore them. But after that, you have what it would appear to be more specific efforts, and I was just going to name the ones better known. Uh, yoga, Sufism, Zen, and the one I started to bring in when I was giving a short history of the United States in this is uh, what they're calling the fourth way now, Gurdjieff. Uh, the Armenian who... It's just a form of Sufism, but uh, there's so many people who now take it to be something quite specifically, and I'll bring it up because I was going to use their impression of it shortly. Uh, but at any rate, there seems to be, from, very from the viewpoint of very interested people, that there continues to be very specific systems, very specific traditions and practices. 
when I say yoga, I assume all of you know I do not mean the uh, physical exercises. It is the... I'm using it in a sense that the would-be mystics have always taken that kind of teaching that, and tradition and philosophy and practices that originated in the subcontinent, more or less. As yoga was a form, a system of trying to expand one's consciousness, trying to turn it loose, trying to expand one's mind, and it was not religion. And it was not simply physical exercises. And Sufism, the same in another part of the world, and Zen, the same in another part of the world. And besides whatever historical baggage they now have, regardless of how mechanical, how much a part of almost mainstream America, if not the world, these things are, there was a distinction originally. And if you knew how to look at it in a certain way, there would still be a distinction. And that is, even before they were a system, before they, were in, before they had a name, they were free from self-reference. But once something develops a name, once it apparently has a history, once it's put in a book and somebody says, well, what the hell do you call this? And somebody says, well, let's call it uh, yoga. Years and years ago, long time ago, somebody said, well, let's call it yoga. And supposedly, if I remember, it was taken from some Sanskrit or pre-Sanskrit word that meant yoke, that was supposed to be a burden that certain people took on, but the burden was to release themselves from unnecessary burdens. That was to take upon oneself this extraordinary task. That's a fine one. And then Sufism, they, they have an explanation for that. And Zen, they have an explanation linguistically. But they all amount, I was going to say they all amount the same thing, but they also, I can pull out some of the translations I've heard, and they don't amount the same thing. They sound like different things. One sounds like, well, uh, yoga stands for yoke and Sufism stands for freedom. Same thing. Before it had a name, any system, there was some group of people. I want to quit lying to you. Some somebody started. I always keep saying group of people because I try to make it kind of feel inclusive, so as will be. I could say that and be politically correct. It didn't start with some goddamn group of people. I don't know why I keep saying that. It wasn't like a group of people somewhere in India, a group of some people in China at one time, a group of people in Greece decided, God, what we need is some kind of, let's find a person that knows the secret of life and we'll beg him or we'll plead with him. You know, please help us. Please help us. All the books you have read is full of those kind of little corn cob stories. Guess who wrote them? That's not the way it goes. People are looking, but people do not get together and say, well, let's all form a posse. Let's form some kind of spiritual posse and we'll go out searching for this man. We know he's out there and he's probably hiding. He's testing us. Yeah, that's right. He's hanging around behind a newspaper in the occult section of your library peeking to see who keeps checking out the right book so he can come over to your house some night and pull that shit on you that I told you about. I know it's most of you managed to forget about that story. Which just so happened was a true factual event. Somebody somewhere, the father of yoga, started talking. And it finally got to the point that very few people can hear it point blank. And it has to sound like it's a system. People start asking, well, what's the point? And as soon as they say, what's the point? Then what you've got to do is now you're thinking for them. Because if somebody got attracted, that there's a guy somewhere talking like this. I'm just being charitable to the person or myself. Take it either way you want. Either I'm being humble or I'm being humble for this guy 5,000 years ago. You think he's going to thank me? Fat chance. <laughs> or I'm being pushy for one of us. Assume that some people showed up. He was standing out there talking. Maybe he wrote a little pamphlet. Then, well, I say he was talking. And some people showed up that were interested. Shortly, especially, it get to be so many people. There's mathematics, there's physics, there's the law of 
transmission repair all involved in this, but I'm not going into I'm not going into the details. When the crowd gets large enough on some sort of regular basis, someone will come up with this absolutely astounding, cold-blooded, heart-wrenching, run for your life, the dam is busted question. Finally, somebody said, well, and they'll always preface it. They'll catch you flat-footed. They'll prove that you're just as stupid as they are. I'm speaking again for this man. person says, I have been attending these. I've been listening to you talk now for X number of weeks or months. Yes, yes. And God has changed my, I just felt like I finally found what I've been after in my whole life. I'm just, I know. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. But if I may be familiar, can I just ask one question, which I'm sure I'm speaking for many of the people here. And they go, hmm. And he says, well, go ahead. And he says, well, just, would you go ahead, since you're obviously that you understand it all. Would you just tell us, because it's so hard. Is not this I am? It keeps worrying me. Would you just, short, would you just in a few words, just tell us, what's the point of this? Now, either the guy's going to explode or maybe whip the guy's ass or, you know, tell everybody, wait right here, i got to go to the bathroom and, le and leave the country. <laughs> it's either that or he's going to fall down the shaft with them or down to their level. Because if he answers at all, what have you got? Starts with an S. Hey, system, that's correct. Which is the beginning of a religion. Well, fear is first, and then a system, and then a religion. If he answers, and the answer can be apparently truthful, or at least innocuous. They could be close to the one I just made up a few minutes ago. He could say, well, let's assume that this guy stalls for a minute. And he goes... When I, you told me, I've, I've seen your face. You've been coming here, taking notes. I've been noticing, you, you really, yes, I do. You know, if right now you said you were going to leave and go to Mongolia, well, all right, northern China, at least. <laughs> I'd go with you. I'd follow. This is it. And so the guy says, all right, and so you've been coming here for X number of months, yes. Well, why is it now? And you say that you're convinced this is it, yes, what you're looking for, yes. Well, tell me now, why is it? such a pressing problem that you insist that I put some sort of word, some sort of answer, and give you some sort of just description about what the point is. If all of the prior is true and correct in your case, why is this of any significance? Now, if he did that, and you were sitting there, what would you think? You know, besides, you know, what kind of shit is that? You know, what's the point? You know, maybe you wish the guy hadn't asked the question out of the crowd, but then you wonder about this guy. Well, why you meet him, you know, just answer the guy so he'll shut up, or maybe I'm interested. Once you put a name on it, you have done, not just start a system, but you have done something operationally even more detrimental. What? You have made your own first self-reference. Because as soon as you say what it is, then you're engaged in self-reference. And it doesn't matter. The whole crowd go, ah, oh, aha, uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. And it's aha uh -huh shit. It's aha uh -huh hell. It's aha uh -huh you blister heads. It's aha uh -huh the brain has now been expelled from potential paradise. You are now left with it is as though you have taken your first snort, your first hit, your first drink. You have become, you are addicted. If that was important, if you were that person in the crowd that asked, you have become addicted now to self-referring systems. You have now been given what's apparently a map. And once you have a map, remember that one of the most important purposes of a map is to keep one from going anywhere. That's not a joke. In the ordinary world, it doesn't matter because you can't go anywhere anyway. But it's all the institutions saying, "Aha! Uh -huh. Look at our, you know, look at our college catalog. Look at the pamphlet for our church. Look at the statement of purpose of our new political party." And they hand it to you, and you look, and you go, "That is impressive." I don't know. You may go to a meeting. You can say, "Well, it did make me go somewhere." You may go to a meeting. But the main purpose of it was, and they didn't know it, but the main purpose of it was to keep everybody from realizing 
This is all bullshit. It's not going to amount to anything. It's not going to go anywhere. This thing's not workable. But is that a nice job of that brochure or what? That's and plus, did you see the building they're building out there? Hey, it's a lot better than that place I grew up. Where I was going to political rallies back then, there was a bunch of wild-eyed guys in rags, and they were having to meet down in an alleyway. But look at this guy. They got these fancy brochures, artwork. They got a logo and a slogan. <laughs> you know, Workers of the world, quit, or whatever it is. <laughs> I guess it's safe to make fun of the communists now that they're out of power, aren't they? <laughs> Or I should say, make fun of Karl Marx now that he's with the rest of the brothers. <laughs> in that big stateroom scene in the sky. <laughs> Come think about it, wouldn't that serve Karl if you ever tried to read that <laughs> Das Kapital? Is it serving right to die instead of go to hell? They lock him in a steamer trunk with Chico Marx. <laughs> or Harpo. Jesus. You have all the forms, the main ones I was mentioning, the Suf Sufism, Yoga, Zen, and that just about covers anything you can pick out so-called mystical aspects or the mystical uh, factions within Christianity, Judaism. I throw that in on the basis that some of you may know that historically still they consider uh, Sufism be some mystical aspect of Islam and the Zen to really give, let Westerners play with their brains. And the Zen is some kind of mystical aspect to Buddhism. I don't even want to... <laughs> you don't want to think about it, but anyway, that's... It's just that they always take people who are academically interested and some who are believe that they are pragmatically interested. But especially academically, every time that the world looks at the human minds, ordinary minds looks at some attempted form or apparent form of mystical practice or tradition, they always will stick it and just immediately identify it as being some kind of secret core, some kind of inner group to another point of whatever prevailing religion it is. It doesn't mean anything, it's just, you know, what the hell is Sufism? It sounds strange enough anyway. Uh-huh. Of course, Islam, if you're outside, that sounds a little strange when you hear about it, the name. Even, you know, that, that's not Southern Baptist. That's not Church of God or you know, Islam. Strange enough, but Sufism, what the hell does that mean? That is the weirder group inside the weird group. Ah. If you look at them historically, they all apparently still have or did have physical material practices, rituals, traditions, that historically, now the mind points at, tries to quote even ancient, more ancient figures as saying here was the purpose. And here is still the purpose if you believe in, you know, if you're a follower of such, that you say the purpose is, and that comes out with such things uh, constantly. Now, that Zen, let me stick with the, the main ones. They're just examples. Yoga and Sufism, they will say, by and large, that whatever text is written, whatever academic look is taken, whatever historical view is assumed, they will say, well, the purpose of this, there can be an outside, just like a theoretician writing about it. They say, well, it's obvious from their writings and my study, the purpose of Sufism, you know, and it says so, I, I can find two or three references, is to put one in communion, in direct communion, a direct personal experience between man and God. That is what it's now all come to at a certain level. That they will do it with Zen, they'll do it with uh, Sufism, they'll do it with yoga, 
they will do it, and they'll, of course, change the names around. They'll say that uh, really with Sufism, now they'd say it's an attempt for a man to have a personal direct experience with Allah. And they would say with, you know, with yoga, it's an attempt for a man to have a personal, individual connection directly to the Atman, to the cosmic force that runs everything. And then Zen, they got their own story. But always, they now, once it becomes a system, they will always bring it to God, whether they're agreeing with it or not. They will talk about it. In other words, someone will be talking about Sufism and it being the mystical core of Islam, and that the point is that Sufis do all sorts of exercises and fastings and etc. Whatever the practices that they would describe are, is to put one to cause one eventually to have a direct personal experience, a direct communication, a direct kind of love affair with God, without the the, without the interference, without the intercession of an organized religion. That is systemization working full force. <laughs> if you ever have any doubt that something has become systematized, uh, it is still true as weak and as, in a sense, relatively unimportant as religion is to everyday, everyday people's everyday affairs now, relatively speaking to what it once was, Still, as I said, even just academically, historically, they will still even take those things that appear to be most extraordinary, such as attempts to do whatever this is. And once they put a name on it, right, it's, it's Sufism or it's yoga, then right after that, then they will explain that this is in some way tied to the indigenous religion of some great region. And then they will describe it finally as, well, the whole attempt that they're going through all of these practices and rituals is for the individual to be able to bypass just the common crude uh, or the more simplistic religious practices that the masses seem to tolerate that seem to be all that they need and it's for these certain individuals to have this direct experience with God. It'll always come to that. Before they were a system, back to my man staying there in India, in Japan, in Greece, in Mesopotamia, in somewhere, the man to start out before there was a name for what he was doing, before he, if he did, before he weakened and said, well, all right, call it, <clears throat> the, call it Hubertism, <laughs> name, no doubt, after himself. But before he slept and did that, either that or he died and his brother-in-law, you know, who still couldn't get a job, that's one of the ways to go. <laughs> He went, well, before that, he died, he told me, he left me in charge, and he told me to name it after him. And I'm his only living in-law. So, you know where that puts me in line. Before there was any systematizing to whatever the man was teaching, whatever, whatever he knew and he was talking about, there was never, ever any mention of God. That only comes about once the system has no validity. Once the system's a system, it has no validity because now it's civilized. Now it's bullshit. And it'll be shortly, if it lives in longer, it'll become not just a system, not just a cult, not just a philosophy. It will become a religion. That's been true up until now. And it still keeps popping up, but that's been the kind of progression. That as soon as there's a group of people listening to somebody that knew what life was about, and if somebody says, well, my family keeps asking me, what are you doing? Where are you going at night? I keep wondering. I mean, I know this is it, but just to, what, what? I'd feel so much better. I feel like I'd make a big jump forward if you'd tell me, what is this? Just give me a name. The guy, oh, all right, it's Hubertism. I knew it. I just knew it. I just knew it. I just, oh, boy. That guy, representing, he can represent himself, or you can look at him as a metaphor for 100 years. You can look at it as a metaphor for moving this whole affair over 50 years and move it 150 miles away. It doesn't matter. If it survives, if this play runs that long, it will turn into, after this guy's gone, after he washed his hands of it and left and changed his name from Hubert to Cadillac X or something. <laughs> By the time it gets, it has any longevity and has any movement, They'll be talking about that it's, the whole purpose is to find God, to get in direct communication with God. That is when you know, if you ever had an ability to hear any of this, that's when you know you have fallen in to the septic tank. <laughs> 
and don't bother you know, fishing around when you drop your coat to get to get your lunch out of the pocket. And, just my personal advice. I want you to see a certain one more time. It's not the only history. It's not the only one I could verbally portray to you. But this is one of the views, one of the workable, one of the objective, nonpartisan views of this kind of aggression from and you. Remember, we're not speaking about Greeks and Indians and history. I'm talking about you because you've relived it. You wonder, you know, this thing feels so good. Oh, you know, if I can make my brain as much fun as my whacker is to me, <laughs> and you women fill in your own view. You know, God, I am on to something. It will be fun to be alive. I won't even mind growing up and having to get a haircut and a job and a suit. Woo! <laughs> and it does not happen. And since it does not happen, and if you do not go nuts, if you end up being ordinary, then you'll end up being civilized, of course. You'll end up being sane and civilized, which is the same thing. And you'll end up, in some degree, to some degree, a participant in specific institutions of civilization. If not religion, just a general, I believe as they call it nowadays, mindset. That even if you no longer go to church or to temple or to anywhere... That you just mainly do your job and you come home and you watch TV and you, you know, do a few just ordinary run-of-the-mill things. You still have a kind of mindset. You have your own personality, which is your own uh, diagram, if you knew how to read it, of your neural processes. And so, therefore, you hear things and you're always not thinking about anything that comes from within. You're always thinking in reaction to what appears to be from without. No, you're always reacting to. Now, people can say they're not, but we're not dealing with them. If you say you're not, you should be back in religion. You've missed the whole point. Because when the mind operating, is why I keep trying to distinguish and call it the mind and then looser consciousness or something. But your ordinary thought processes are a continual reaction. It's a continual talking back to life, talking back to some external source. And tonight we're going, not going into, because if we had some you know, real sharp person here, they might be already thinking, I'd read their little mind. they go, oh, wait a minute, how can it be otherwise? Where is this little imaginary person? Where are you? <laughs> so once it has become a system of any sort, once you have become civilized, you are dealing with, if you ever ask yourself the question, Again, after you know, reaching maturity, if you ever ask yourself again, well, what happened to all this great desire when I thought life was going to be so much fun somewhere up here in my brain? What happened? And there is nowhere to turn to. And all you can turn to is back to what I was saying, even if you're not part of an active, if you're not leading an actively religious life or political life, is you turn back to your own personality, your own mindset, your own mental patterns, and you talk back to life. And that's what you say now, and all you're doing is engaged in a kind of systematic self-reference. But you don't see it that way. You say that you're thinking, but you're not. Your religion has now become your personality. And I mean personality in the widest possible sense, not in any sort of academic, psychological fashion. That is, let us say that you're freed from all religion. You're no longer full of religion, you don't really think about it much, and you, really, you say that, that you're not active politically. Uh, you know, you're out of school, you got no interest in going back to school, you're just doing your job, living it, and going home. I'm watching TV, listening to radio, go to a movie. But still, up here, in, so on that basis, an ordinary person can say, well, I am not engaged in some sort, I'm not part of any system out there in society, in civilization, and so therefore I am not a part of being integral to a system engaged in self-reference. Yes, you are. Because if you're not part of an identifiable system, if you say so, I accept it. We're not arguing. You say, I'm not. I'm my own man. There's your system. <laughs> are you seriously? Yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Now we're back to my thing. Yeah, tell us what kind of guy you are. Why do you have to keep telling them? Why does ordinary people have to keep telling what kind of guy they are? Because they are as vacuous and empty as religion, as politics. That's why people have to keep talking. That's why the minister has to keep standing up. 
And he can't talk about what's supposed to be the purpose. Even in their little brochure somewhere it says the you know, first church of Hubertism of Little Rock, Arkansas. Fort Hope, Arkansas, better yet. And it says, our purpose is to put man more in direct communion to his true nature and to God. And you think, I found it. Just right in here in the Ozarks. And I run, this is it. And you rush out to the church. And you find, this is the little church. And you go in there. They sing a few songs. The guy gets up. What's the first thing they start doing? What's the only thing they can do? Is engage in self-reference. To their religion, to the Bible, to the building program, to the minister, how sick he's been, what kind of guy he is, how the whole town's picking on him, how nobody appreciates the great work he's doing, and the congregation too. And they all go, yeah, yeah, because now he's dragged them into it, and they're all telling what kind of guy they are, yep, yep. That is the system. That is the self-reference. And it's not, it wouldn't do any good to stand outside my example, much less outside their building, and go, ha, ha, you're right. All they're doing is blowing smoke up each other's ass. Nobody knows what they're doing. And so they keep talking around the, the edges of it. I mean, here it states, there's their purpose. And nobody ever talks about the purpose. They printed it there one time. But not, what do they talk about? Mostly money. Mostly money and the kind of problems they're having. Who's sick? <laughs> the minister telling how sick he's been. But no, that's all right. I knew I had to be here today. And they're like, oh, bless his heart. And they're all telling but all they're doing is engaging in self-reference. But their system... If they said, if they insisted, no, we're not tied up with that. Or my example, the man who's not part of that. If he insists, well, I am not part of such as that. That's his system. He's saying, no, no, I don't, I don't go for that. No, uh -uh. I am my own man. No, he's not. He's not his own man as long as he tells what kind of guy he is. He has now fallen into the Hubertism trap. If at one time he did have any ability to be his own person, he finally... He could blame it on you if he knew what he was doing. He said, well, I was doing all right in life until you came along and you told me all this crap I've been hearing you talk about for the last 50 minutes. And now, you know, I'm the one who said, wait a minute, I don't belong to any kind of organized religion or I don't belong to any political group. I got no interest in it. So I don't see that that applies to me. Now, you tell me the truth. Yeah. I mean, I'm just serious. I enjoyed it up until now, but I've just got to point out to you that that's not true. I'm not that kind of guy. He's, if it were true up to that point, if it were true, which it couldn't have been, but if it were true up to that point, in my imaginary time, the man has now fallen in to the great cesspool, the great captious intrigue of Hubertism. You understand? He would be in the same position as my man 6,000 years ago staying there in India, attempting his best possible words to point out the point blank reality right in front of your eyes and right behind your eyes, which is most important. And someone finally says, I like it. I like it. I like it. Just well, what do you call What is this? I mean, I know this is where I belong, but what do you call it? It's the same thing as a man saying, wait a minute. I've listened to this, but I am not part of any group. I'm not part of any system. I've got no interest in it. My interest is in finding the truth, reality, expanding my own understanding. I, that's the only kind of guy I am. He has answered the question. He has responded. Do you understand? He has responded like the man there in the audience. To my guy 6,000 years ago, it says, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. But you know, just between you and me, what, what is this? I mean, it's got to be something. It's Hubertism. It's the kind of guy you are. It's that now you are engaged the rest of your life, unless you can break out of it, in self-reference. All you're going to do is think about, you know, the hell of being a lonely troubadour out here on a Greyhound bus, being a country and western singer. <laughs> what a life. Do, 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 do. I don't know that anybody needed it, but does it give you any more appreciation? Look under definition three of trying to do such as this. And I don't mean me, although it is hard being a wandering minstrel on a Greyhound bus <laughs> going from, oh, <clears throat> Uh, 
Is there some corollary from playing air guitar to playing air head? <laughs> <laughs> Having imaginary thoughts? <laughs> that you might appreciate the difficulty. I don't, like I guess I don't mean just me and I don't mean just you. I mean everything. Of trying to do such as this. I can start making up, I guess, uh, allegories, metaphors, which I, I already thought of one or two that kind of pleased me, but what's the point? You know, I can start saying it's like, you know, trying to walk the world's thinnest tightrope across the world's deepest gorge, or a gorge that's so wide you can't see the banks, you can't see where it is, you suddenly find yourself on this tightrope, and you can't even see over there, and you, you're afraid to look back. In the tightrope, I'll do it better. It's so thin that if you look down, it becomes even thinner and will probably cut your feet to pieces and you'll fall and die. And it'll probably just rip right up your leg and cut you into you know, two places. And even when you fall, you'll just be splurting blood and hollering and your guts will be coming out. That's if you look down just to make sure you're all right, see? Huh? But that's what it is as soon as you talk about it in a certain way and take the talk seriously. That, aha, uh -huh, so that's what it is. Yes, I'll admit it, after all this time, it is simply, I am repackaging, well, I shouldn't say, I don't mean that in a negative sense, but I have been sent here by certain secret forces to bring the heart of Buddhism back up to date. Zen was a nice try for a while, and it served a purpose, but things change. I'm sorry, they change, and so now, yes, you found me out, I'll have to admit, that's what I'm here for, is to redo Christianity. What did I say, boot? Uh, Hindu, uh, well, whatever the hell it was. <laughs> yes, that's it. People go, uh-huh, I always suspected that. I can't do it like the guys on TV. <laughs> Well, you know, I shouldn't be making fun of them because when you don't know what you're talking about, it's real hard not to have twitches and do hand gestures and whine. And that was my example of, if you remember the challenge from last time, one of the items is give an example, a living example of that which is pathetic, pitiful, deplorable, and sickening. And the answer was, any human attempting to sell another human any non-essential goods or services. Which about covers what? <laughs> well, almost everything that we are exposed to. Yes, that's true. <laughs> so, it, you know. That's why you do not have to, you know, you do not have to whine to sell people actual food. That is to make them eat. If we've been through that. You don't have to whine. You don't have to do gestures. All you got to do is get where humans are and put out a sign saying food here. And when people get hungry, they'll come. You don't have to say a word, no bands, no banners, no spotlights. But if you want to eat your particular food, you got to whine, you got to get down the gestures, and you got to, hey, for this week only, the boss says, reduce inventory. We'd rather eat it than tax it, or whatever the hell it is. <laughs> once you talk about it, once you put a name on it, you have a certain kind of encumbrance. You almost you have a mortgage. You have put a kind of weight on your foot. And yet if you don't do that, now I can keep doing these kind of metaphors and go, I, I hear you. That's right, you get all identified with the system or the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you think a little bit further and you think, yeah, but what's the alternative? What the hell are you going to do? I'll answer that for you. What the hell do you think I'm doing? No, I didn't realize that. You don't think it's just an accident that my name's Hubert, do you? <laughs> there are, though I have not been pointing them out of late specifically, there are physical things that you can do which I've thrown out for the last 18 months without telling you. So we're going to 
But there are things to do and not to talk about. It's one reason I quit talking about them, tried to specifically, because if I say, well, look, now here's something you can do specifically, not behaviorally, not, well, everyone quit eating greasy foods. No, no, I'm talking about something to do internally by yourself that you can do physically. You can do it that will encourage unusual expansion, unusual activities in oneself. But as soon as you say, all right, now look, I'm going to tell you something specific to do, what happens? Whether you've got them in your hand or not, out comes pen and pencil. Even if you have to do it up here, you go, okay, now, oh, all right, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> what if you don't tell people? What if you keep talking around like, well, maybe later? Or, well, you know. Uh, The danger, the problem, the trick, the fun, what the hell, the firecracker. Hey, the exhaust in a Chevy that won't slip. Or a night when somebody, a stranger, picks up your bar tab. It's one of those in there. <laughs> it's having naturally good hair. I thought I'd finally get somebody. <laughs> there are physical things that you can do that will encourage like this, this kind of stuff, that will feed, will expand, will revive the joy that you felt when you thought, boy, if I could make my brain as much fun if I could have much fun upstairs, I do downstairs, life will be all right. There are things that you can actually do. But as soon as you tell people to do them, you just, you've got all sorts of, you have opened up the fox house and you've let in some of the world's most unruly and aggressive chickens you can imagine. <laughs> Well, I was going to tell you what some of them are, but we're out of time. <laughs>